Hey guys, I'm Pascal from Orange Pixel and um, I'm really happy with how my game is currently turning into an actual full game. Um, and that's what I wanted to talk about uh, today. Um, right. I wanted to talk about how I really create a game from the first idea I have for the game uh, all the way to actually releasing the game. So having um, all the steps in between uh, what happens, uh, what are the different stages or phases of game development. And that's what we're going to talk about today right after the intro. Let's go. All right, so as I mentioned, we're gonna talk about um, having a game idea, which is really anything can spark a game idea. We'll talk about it in a minute. Um, having a game idea and then moving all the way to having a released game. There's usually a lot of months in between those and in some cases there are years between these things. Um, and what are the different phases that you go through? It's probably different for everybody. So I'm just gonna talk about the phases that I identify in my workflow. So uh, the idea stage, which is prototyping, then there is the final release. And in between there are uh, two or three other stages that we're gonna talk about right now, starting with stage one, idea and prototype. So where do the ideas come from? I think I mentioned this in other videos, ideas come from anywhere. Uh, literally everything can spark a new idea. Sometimes you just base it on, hmm, I wanna create a genre like this. Sometimes you just see a great movie that has a certain action or something in it or you just see a movie about submarines you think hey i want to create a game about submarines um sometimes you just got a feeling hey i want to create a game that has a certain sense or feeling to it and then you start working on that ideas come from everywhere and everybody has ideas if you're out of ideas ask anybody ask a random stranger if you could create a game what would be what would it be and they probably have an idea for you. So ideas are pretty simple. The prototype is actually building that idea, which means you build the most necessary stuff required to see if your idea is actually a good idea. So let's say you have an idea of creating a racing game. Uh, the prototype would need a car that you can move around um, and a road that you can ride on. Pretty much that will be the base of a prototype. Um, then you have to start building on top of that because that's not a game, having a car riding around. So you need to start thinking, what can I add to make this fun and interesting? Uh, so that's probably gonna be a few other cars that you have to compete against or maybe um, enemies that you have to drive over or I don't know, maybe you're just finding the road or finding your way in a big desert and there's no real goal except finding fuel to keep driving. So really a prototype is just trying to build that idea into something that's actually working on your screen that you can play around with and then um, just figure out what makes it fun and where is the fun and is it fun? Which kind of brings us to stage two. All right, so stage two is decision time, which is, um, probably for me at least the hardest part of game development. It should be a fairly short period of time because you have this prototype, you know what you want to create and it should just be a matter of is this prototype gonna be this great game? If not, dump the prototype, start something different. Um, if it is gonna be such a great game and you already see it right now in the prototype then continue the game and just keep working. But in some cases, like uh, last year that I released Ashworld, um, I don't like open world games and my challenge for myself was create an open world game. I wasn't liking it. I wasn't liking the game. I wasn't liking to work on the game. I just didn't feel it. And um, I had a very tough time completing the game because um, most of the days I was just sitting by the computer looking at a game that I wasn't enjoying. So I would kind of look at Twitter or YouTube and not work on the game and do other stuff, which of course is a big problem if uh, making games is really a, your full-time job and making a living from it. So um, if you can't complete a game, you're not gonna get any money and you have a problem. So decision time is really um, the hardest part and making the decision of cutting a game or continue work on it is, um, I don't know, it's mostly experience. You just need to know, uh, is this game still saveable? Is the prototype still saveable? Can it be turned into a complete game? Uh, will it be good enough? Can you still do it in a certain time limit? I can't keep spending two, three or four years on a game. It needs to be done within a certain time because I need to create the next game and I need to have some money coming in. It's a lot of stuff that uh, really just keeps weighing on the decision. Are you going to continue with the prototype or are you not going to continue on the prototype? So um, it's the hardest part, but there's light at the end of this part because in stage three, 
you get to the fun part of game development. Running to the finish line. The prototype is done, the decision time is done because you have a great working game so you know this game is gonna make it, we're gonna complete it, we're gonna finish it, we're gonna work on it, we enjoy the work on it. And it's just a matter of adding content, levels, enemies, worlds, um, extra features and layers of gameplay like for example the main goal of the game is um, reach the end of the level but we're gonna add little secrets and hidden stuff that you can also find and figure out and that adds new layers to the gameplay. It's a lot of fun because you know the game underneath is already fun and playable so basically all the time you put into now is just gonna add on top of this fun game and is gonna make it bigger and better and hopefully that makes it also more valuable to players and more interesting to players. So um, this is the fun part. It's currently where I am with Gunslug Rogue Tactics um, in this phase. I also struggled with this game for a few weeks uh, because the game was fun, it was a platformer, but it wasn't the special platformer I wanted to create. Um, right now it is, at least to me it is, because all these things are, are working together and it's, it's fun to play and test the game. It's also fun to work on it because I still have a list of ideas that I want to add, which is really very easy. I just open up my list every morning. I check at the new stuff I want to add and at the few bugs that I need to fix and then I just do it and add it and the game is playable and testable and fun and it's just getting bigger and better as I work on it every day. The big problem in this stage is of course knowing when to quit. You can't keep adding stuff to the game. Eventually you need to just wrap it up and end the game. Which brings us to the next stage. Stage four, the wrap up. All right, so in stage four, it's pretty clear. I need to stop myself from adding new stuff to the game. Um, no more new levels, no new worlds, no enemies, no items, no. Stop working on new ideas. You, sometimes I write them down because you might have to do updates later on or I might want to do a sequel or whatever. So I write down some of the ideas, but I have to stop myself from adding stuff to the game because I have to wrap up the game and start releasing it, which means um, digging into the code, finding those bugs that I know exist and just fixing it. But it's not very satisfying work because most of the stuff isn't visual in the game. It's just um, cleaning things up, polishing the interface, cleaning bugs, fixing bugs, uh, minor tweaks and nothing new gets added. So the game is already there, it's playable and it's just a matter of cleaning it up. And nobody likes cleaning up stuff so that's the hardest part of the wrap up. But after the wrap up comes stage five, releasing the game. All right, so stage five is after the wrap up is done, the game is done, the polishing is done, the interface is done. It's now just a matter of doing all the other stuff that nobody likes to do. The storefronts, so I set up a page on App Store, on the Google Play Store, on Steam, Itch. Uh, if you're doing on console, there are all those eShops. There is a lot of stuff going on there. You need to create screenshots, marketing images, um, banners, videos, uh, contact people, write press releases promote the game even more than you hopefully already did while working on the game. Something I do from stage one, prototyping, I usually already show animated GIF, GIFs, GIFs, well, animated little pictures. I do that in all stages, but in the final stage, it's really a matter of everybody needs to know this game is done and it's coming then and then. There should be a date already in this phase because if you don't have a release date yet, you can't really tell people it's coming. Obviously, well, you can tell people it's coming, but you don't know when, so there's not much point in telling them. So stage five is really uh, the business side of things. And after stage five, it's basically back to stage one, but working on a new idea and prototype. And um, if those prototypes fail, we go back to stage one and again and again, until we find an idea or prototype that works, and then we move through all the stages again. Um, which is what I'm gonna do next year. Gunslug is now in stage three. Um, then I have to wrap it up, release it, I hope it's going to be March or April when I start on a new idea and I'm going to record all those steps for you um, next year. So I hope you'll subscribe to the channel so that you can follow all these different stages and let me know in the comments below what you think about these stages and if you're a game developer, uh, do you agree with these stages or do you think I missed one or are there more stages in game development? Let me know in the comments below and um, I'll see you guys next week. Bye!